one day now until the vice presidential debate. I can't believe how exciting this is. Governor Sarah Palin and U.S. Senator Joe Biden face off tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So how do they think they're going to do tomorrow night? Joining me right now is MSNBC's political analyst Michelle Bernard and the salon's Joan Walsh. Ladies, thank you for joining us. I want you to look right now at an interview piece from Katie Couric, who's getting a lot of noise about her interview with uh, Sarah Palin. Here's a bite that I think went on last night. What newspapers and magazines did you regularly read before you were tapped for this to stay informed and to understand the I've world? read most of them, again, with a great appreciation for the press, for the media. But like what coming, specifically? I'm curious that you... Um, all of them, any of them that um, have... have been in front of me over all these years. Um, I have a va- I have a vast variety of sources where we get our news to. Alaska isn't a foreign country where it's kind of suggested. It seems like, wow, how could you keep in touch with what the rest of Washington D.C. may be thinking and doing when you live up there in Alaska? Believe me, Alaska is like a microcosm of America. Michelle, what do you make of that answer? <laughs> what would you know, a, a I, I, wide I, open question? What do you make of that? I, I almost think that it was actually good strategy on Sarah Palin's part. She's playing to her base. She's playing to the to the. What, I, would, what would that base want to hear I, from her? W- want to hear that the media is beating up on her? Oh, that, how is she beating that, up? No, I, I'm not saying that the media is beating up on her, but the argument will be that the media is beating up on her, and many conservatives feel that if she were a left wing feminist, nobody would be asking her these kind of questions. Oh, my personal on. opinion. Oh, Joe, jo, okay. jo, let me finish. My personal opinion is it's a fair and open-ended question i don't know why she didn't answer it i'm assuming it is strategy she's speaking to joe Sixpack, who will say yeah why are they doing that to her big well, deal she just, reads the newspaper you, well, joan you next you next honestly, what, what, what I, do you think of the question was it a good question it's from a good Katie question Curry? you you know you you've probably asked it yourself chris we've all been at we've been asked it uh when we've all been interviewed it's a good window onto our worldview do you say the new yorker she could have said the wasilla frontiersman or the alaska daily news to give a shout out to her local people people uh you know she could have said field and stream i'm not and i don't mean to be condescending she should have said something i was hoping she would say salon that hurt a little bit right well i thought it was an answer that was uh, either she didn't read anything possible i'm sure she does possibly i'm sure every politician reads the local newspaper absolutely every right. paul right let's That's give true. her that yeah and they probably read the local weeklies because they have a lot of stuff in there and if you don't read them you can't get elected so she obviously reads the local absolutely. newspaper and the open question is why didn't she say i read the uh, Anchorage paper. Why don't she say I read the Juno paper? I think because I, I would imagine that she's thinking that depending on what her answer is, we will either hear she's not conservative enough, she's too liberal, she's not up on foreign affairs. My God, she doesn't read the New York Times. But that's life, uh, Michelle. I think she's you got, got a weak she's answer. Got to, she's got to define I, I, I'm herself. I'm going with Joan on this because I think there is a right answer. What do you read? You tell them the answer. Mm-hmm. Why would you not say what you're... Why would you be embarrassed by, if she reads the Weekly Standard? By the way, she's probably getting a lot of that this week. <laughs> I'm sure From she Randy is. Shuneman. I'm sure she's getting stacked up on that info. Let's take a look at her performance. But a hell of it, she's apparently a very strong debater when she's up against another politician, not against a journalist. Here she is in her race for the governorship in her gubernatorial debate on television. Sarah, I didn't hear an answer to my question, so let me repeat it to you and I'll say it slower. What, what percentage of the state budget today represents the constitutionally mandated services that you're going to protect, and where else would you cut? Well, and, Andrew, it's a large percentage, and you know, I, I, I'm a candidate, so I don't mind at all you kind of disrespecting candidates with that kind of talk, but I would hope in your business that you don't. Well, that, you know what the question was, how much of the budget can you change? If you talk about cutting things or freezing things or that sort of thing, you have to know what's mandated and what you can't play with. Was that a reasonable question by your debating partner? It was... all, it's politics. It was a reasonable question. It was fair. The way he said, I'm going to talk a little bit slower. I hope Joe Biden was watching the tape. Right. If yeah. he does that tomorrow, he's going to be in big trouble. That's the difficulty that Sarcasm that, that doesn't work, Joan, right? No, it doesn't. And Sarcasm, not against a female candidate. Right. Sarcasm doesn't work and being condescending doesn't work. He should not treat her like she's stupid. There's no reason to think that she's stupid. So I think that is, I, that's a test for Biden. I don't expect him to come out and treat her like she's stupid, but there are there are a number of things he can't do, and that's one of them. Well, let's switch to Joe Biden. Let's be fair here. Let's take a look at some of his problems. Let's take a look at a Brian Williams interview with Joe Biden that sort of told you something about his own wariness of where he's weak. An editorial in the Los Angeles Times said, in addition to his uncontrolled verbosity, Biden is a gaffe machine. 
Can you reassure your voters in this country that you would have the discipline you would need on the world stage, Senator? Yes. Thank you, Senator Biden. That was uh, Brian Williams as Jack Benny there, by the way, <laughs> enjoying the reaction shot up. Is this something, Joan, he can do? Can he be that abstemious, with that economical with his words to offset the charge that he's a, a, a gaffe machine or he talks too much? He's sure going to try. I mean, Chris, you and I watched a couple of debates together, I think, and we saw him, you know, rein himself in. He's, he exercised a lot of discipline during those debates. He also got off, you know, a very good one-liner about uh, Rudy Giuliani, noun, verb, and 9-11. Oh, okay, You've led, you have led us into the promised land from his <laughs> point of view. Here is uh, Joe Biden on that very point. I'm running to lead the free world. I'm running to lead this country. And the irony is Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, probably the most underqualified man since George Bush to seek the presidency, <laughs> is here talking about any of the people here. Rudy Giuliani. I mean, think about it. Rudy Giuliani, there's, th there's only three things he mentioned in the sentence, a noun and a verb and 9-11. I mean, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. And I mean it sincerely. He is genuinely not qualified to be president. Michelle, they're all going to come in with those little bicentennial moments, aren't they, right? <laughs> they are, and he's really good at that. The problem with that is that once he makes the point, he keeps going on and on and on, and that's usually when he puts his foot in his mouth, a la, I like Barack Obama, he's clean and smart, and whatever else it was he said, so he's got to be wary. <laughs> Joan, Joan, I have to ask you the toughest question of the night. How does okay. Joe Biden beat her? on points. In other words, look better, look smarter, look sharper, look like a better candidate for VP and not beat up on her. How does he thread that needle? I think he threads that needle, Chris, by focusing on John McCain, by really focusing on the economic and the global foreign policy issues before us, by not getting personal, by not trying to trip her in, into mistakes. I think he's got to be I personally think he's got to be gracious and magnanimous to her. That doesn't mean, here's the tough thing. I think there may be moments where, where a light touch and a fair follow-up might, might elicit something, but I think he's got to be really wary of that. I think he's got to look above her and beyond her to John McCain. That's what the race is really about, and he's, he's here representing Barack Obama. And I think if he does that and tries to keep the focus off her while, tr while treating her very respectfully, which she deserves, mm -hmm. I think he'll do very well. Here's a great question. It's not in the Brooks Brothers book of etiquette. I'll okay. ask you, Michelle, but here's the question. As they're sitting down, it's going to be a sit-down debate, and, and she's having trouble with her chair. You know how people sit down, they have to pull them in. Yes. If, is, does he dare reach over and help her? With, i got to go to Joan with this one. <laughs> does he dare reach over instinctively or well-trained or whatever and help her with her chair from behind? Or is that I get two, I get two no, hard I questions. In now. I get two hard questions in a row. Uh, I think he helps her. What do you think, Michelle? I think he helps her. There's absolutely no reason not to do so, and she's not somebody who's going to complain or think that she's been assaulted because right. he's being chivalrous. Suppose she pulls that number and helps him with his chair. <laughs> yeah, she'll go <laughs> the biggest laugh of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he's so old. He He's old, oh, you know. You're tough. You're tough. He did, she did say that she's been listening to his speeches <laughs> since 1972. <laughs> nice. When I believe she nice was in one. second grade. Here is uh, Governor Palin with a funny line, apparently, from her 2006 gubernatorial debate. Ms. Palin, you're elected governor. Would you hire your opponents for a state job, and if so, for what job? Andrew Halker would be the most awesome statistician that the state could ever <laughs> even look for. Um, he would be good. So, yeah, Andrew would be the statistician. Ms. Palin, would you hire Mr. Knowles for a job? Uh, do they need a chef down there in Juneau? That, I know that that is what he enjoys doing. Well, that's spontaneity, my friends. It is, and it, she's a lot. It's a big thing with politicians. Are you spontaneous? Can you answer the unexplained, uh, the unexpected? Absolutely. That's what I mean when I say let Sarah Palin be Sarah Palin. If the McCain people leave her alone tomorrow, I think we will see a lot of that. What we just watched, we'll see the Sarah Palin that we saw oh, in St. Paul. You're saying that she should second guess her briefers? Just to use a word she's been taught. Thank you. I love this stuff. It's so speculative. Anyway, thank yes. you, Michelle Bernard. Thank you, John Walsh. we got to come back and do a little Sardi's review of the performances tomorrow.